Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the fifth video in the Source Control with Xcode series. In this video, we're going to take a look at Git Ignore and how we can use a combination of a global file and a project one to keep unnecessary files and secrets out of our Git repository. If this is something you want to learn, then keep watching. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. You may recall that when we first started this series, I had you make some modifications to that Git tab in the source control for the settings for Xcode. Let's take a look at that now. These first two fields are used to assign the author to each commit, and we've seen that. But I also had you enter two lines in the ignored files section so that these files would not get committed. Well, where is this information stored? Well, let's go to the finder and I'm going to use terminal to navigate to my home directory. And to do that, once terminal is open, I can simply go cd and then with tilde and forward slash, if you're not there already, press enter and you'll be changed to your home directory. And then I can simply type open period return and it'll open the finder window. Now, if you're not seeing a hidden file, so starting with a period, you can use command shift period to toggle between showing and hiding those files. When you do that in your home directory, you'll find a period git config or dot git config file. And if I double click on it, it'll just open it in my text editor. The user section is what is used for the author name and email. So changing it in either place will update that. The core section has an excluded files that references your home directory and it's called the .gitignore underscore global. So let's close this file and I can locate that gitignore underscore global file. And if I open that in my text editor, you'll find those two entries one on each line. Well, the git ignore global file is a configuration file used in the context of the git version control system. It's a file where you can specify patterns of files and directories that you want git to ignore globally across all of your git repositories. Source control can be used for version control in more than just Xcode. You can use it with other development languages besides Xcode or even for managing version control on a folder full of text documents. We saw that with our readme file. We've learned how to add and commit files to use git using the command line. And if you want, you can add more rules to this file. TopDoll is a marketplace for top developers, engineers, programmers, coders, architects, and consultants. And it's created a website that will generate git ignore content for almost anything you can think of. So if we visit the gitignore.io site, in the search field, I'm going to type in Xcode. And then when I search, I see that I'm presented with suggested files for ignoring in Xcode. The lines that are prefaced with a pound sign or a hashtag are ignored. But you see that the first unignored entry is that XE user data. That's what we already have. The next section is for Xcode 8 and earlier, and I'll never use that, so I'm just going to ignore that. Well, this is followed by a patch where it will ignore everything that has an Xcode project extension, followed by anything else in a directory. But we can use an exclamation mark or a bang to ignore all files that match the patterns that follow them, like this. So if I wanted, I can copy these lines here and add them to my git ignore, and they'll apply them to all of my projects. So let's return to the search screen, but this time I'm going to search for macOS. And you'll see the first entry there is that period ds underscore store. And then there are a number of other entries that really do not belong in a git repository. So I'm going to copy all of them and add them to my global git ignore file too. And then I can remove that first ds store file. Now, if I return once more to the gitignore.io and enter Swift, I'll see there are a lot more suggestions. 
Now, many of these are related to playgrounds or Swift Package Manager, Carthage, etc. Some are for older versions of Xcode. I'm going to leave it up to you to decide if you want to add all these to your global gitignore file. But I think for us, what we have right now is pretty good. So if I return to Xcode and the source control git settings, you'll see that the entire file is now listed in the ignored file section. The beauty of this is that Xcode will have already checked this before we create a new project if source control is enabled by default. It will make sure that it ignores any of these files or pattern matches before adding, staging, and committing our initial commit, and thereafter. Sometimes, though, there are files that you might want to ignore only for certain projects. And this is particularly true if you push your projects up to GitHub as a public project to share with others. So what if you have an API key in your code, and you pay for that key and the usage? Do you really want to share that file with the world to use? There is always a debate about how and where you should store your API keys in Xcode, and you can do your own research on that. What I'm going to do is by no means foolproof, but at least I'm going to show you how you can keep it out of your repository for casual browsers, and it will take a more experienced hacker to retrieve it from your compiled application. Xcode allows us to create project-specific gitignore files where we can add to our global set of restrictions. And Git can process multiple gitignore files in the hierarchy where entries in a project-specific gitignore file will take precedence over those in a global gitignore file. So even if you've ignored something in the global file, you can enter a exclamation mark or a bang in front of it to not have it ignored for a specific project. The thing you have to be aware of, however, is that entries in this local file have to be in place before your files are added, staged, and committed. Well, this allows us to set global patterns that apply to most of our projects and still have the flexibility to customize ignore rules for specific repositories using a local git ignore file. And this is a useful way to strike a balance between consistency across your development environment and project specific requirements. I provided a starter project for this video. It's a simple application that uses an API provided by newsapi.org. And among other things, it can fetch a listing of the current technology headlines using a URL and a API key that you must provide. And it's an asynchronous function. Now I have a subset of data that is returned as JSON, which is an array of articles. And all I'm decoding is the title and URL for the news. I present these in a list and display the title with a button that will open Safari and go to the article. Now, currently, this project's not under source control. So as we learned, we can do that by choosing New Git Repository from the Integrate menu. And then, also as we learned, this will add, stage, and commit all files to the project as an initial commit. And our global gitignore will ignore all the files and directories listed in our global gitignore file. Well, if you visit the newsapi.org, you can create an account and get your own API key, which is necessary for this project. It's free and it'll allow you to test out the API. I've already done that and I have an API key, which I'm hiding from you because I don't want you to use it and use up my daily quota. I'm gonna copy it now and I'm gonna return to the Xcode project and paste in the key here. And as soon as I do that, immediately when the preview in the canvas refreshes, a fetch is made and it successfully loads and you can see the current technology headlines for the US. Well, I could commit this, but as soon as I do, this key is now part of my code. And if I push this up to GitHub and it's a public repo, anyone will be able to see it and use it. I want to make it as difficult as possible for people to do that. And in fact, GitHub will even recognize that you have a key in your source code and will hound you about it. What I want to do is to somehow store this key in a file that is not pushed up to GitHub so that if anyone decides to clone my project, they won't get that key. And this can be done by way of a config file. And when we create a project git ignore file, we can specify that that file is ignored. Now, a config file will give us access to an environment specific variable. I've got an entire video on configuration files and flags that go into this in more detail. So I encourage you to watch it. 
So I'm going to go through this with minimal explanation as I do go through that in detail in the video. So this is what you can do. First, create a new file and search for configurations and select the configuration settings file. And you can leave the name as config.xe config. It's possible that you may have many configuration files though. In the configuration, we can create any number of keys and assign values to those keys that we can retrieve at compile time. The keys are strings and the values can be any one of the types that you see here when I click on this link. If I return to Xcode, I can create a key that I'm going to call API underscore key, and it's customary to use all caps and then underscore for space. And the value will be our key string that we copied, but don't enclose it in quotes. I'm going to need this API key here, so I'm just going to copy this so it's on my clipboard. Next then, we can go to the Projects Info tab. And then click on the plus button at the bottom to create a new entry. For the key, I'll just paste in the API key, the same that we used in our config file. And then in the string, we can grab that value from our config by fetching it using the variable dollar sign and then brackets with API underscore in between. Next, we'll select the app project and the info tab. And in the configuration section, drop down both the debug and release configurations. And then for both of the targets in debug and release, I'm going to select the config as our configuration. This key from the config configuration will be used in both. In order to fetch this key, we'll need to have some way to fetch it and decode it essentially from the bundle because that's where the config file is stored. And there's a wonderful post by NF's Hipster that provides the code for this, and I'm going to share it with you. I go into more detail in that video I referenced earlier. So you can go to the link for this file, which is a gist that I have, and I'll leave that link in the description. And you can simply just download the zip file, and then you can drag it into your project folder, making sure that the target is selected and you copy. The configuration.swift file is an enum with a single static function that will allow me to pass in a key and it'll fetch the value from the info dictionary and try to assign it to a variable of your choice so long as you give that variable one of the types supported by our configuration. And that's what we saw on that website. The function that we'll want to call is the one that's configuration.value4 and we provide the API key. So if I return to Xcode, we can remove the hard-coded string for the API key now and replace it with a call to the configuration's value function for that string API underscore key. You'll get an error because we've not specified what the type is. Remember, we say that it could be a Boolean, a number, etc. So we have to specify here and say that the API key is expecting a string. You'll still get another error because the function can throw an error and because we're in a do catch block, I can simply use try, and the catch block will print out the error's localized description if it finds one. Before we commit our file, though, we want to make sure that we have the ability to ignore this file before we add stage and commit it. But I'm going to get to that. First, though, let's create a git ignore file. Now, to avoid any typos, I'm going to copy the file name from the navigator. Now back in Finder, I find the best way to create a hidden text file with no extension is to get to the Finder and the Project folder, and I'm going to open that folder in Terminal. We've seen this before. Then I can issue the command line touch command, followed by the name of the file that I want to create, and it's period git ignore, no capital letters. And this will create a hidden git ignore file in the Project folder. Remember, if you're not seeing hidden files, it's command shift period. I'll double click to open the file in your text editor. And then here's where we can enter what we want ignored. And I can use a pound sign or a hashtag first to provide a comment for what this is. And then I can simply paste in the name of my file. 
Well, let's go to Xcode now and commit. Now, this is really important. Notice that the git ignore has not been added, nor has the info p list, but the config xc config and the configuration.swift files have already been staged and added, and the config.xc config file has had a modification. We don't want the xc config file to be added at all. So, what we have to do is to make sure that our git ignore is added and committed beforehand. And we might as well add that and stage the others too. So I'm going to do a stage all. And this will stage all files. But this config.xc config is the one that I want removed from tracking. So let me unstage it. And as soon as I do that, it removes it from our source control navigator. It will not now be tracked. For some reason, this added configuration file wasn't staged properly. So let me do that now. Now, all files that I want tracked are staged. So we're safe now to add a comment, which I'm going to call chore, and describe what I'm doing in this chore. And now I can commit. Back in the Xcode project navigator, we see that the config file is still there, but it's not being tracked by Git. This means when we push this up to GitHub, the file will not go with it. Let's verify that that file isn't being tracked. Let's return to the finder and open a terminal window at your project folder again. And then to see which files are being tracked, we can type git ls-files and it'll list all files under source control. So you won't see that config file because it's in our local git ignore, and you won't find any XC user data either because that's in the global git ignore. If I return to my project now and do one more test by running it on the simulator, I find that it's working as designed. Perfect. So let's test out the creation of a remote repository on GitHub and then clone our app to see what happens. We covered remote repositories in the last tutorial, so let me speed through this. First, we'll create a new git ignore examples remote repository. I'm going to make it private and I'll provide a description. And when I create it, I see that it's creating and pushing it up to GitHub. Well, if I open in GitHub, I can open the project folder. And I'll see that the config.xc config file is indeed not there. Well, this project has no README file, so I'm going to create one. And in this README file, I can comment that those that clone this will need to add their own configuration file and provide an API key and the key's value. So I can commit those changes now here up on GitHub. And I'll see that the README is here. So this is what people are going to see when they want to clone this. If I return to Xcode, I know that that README file is still up there. So let me pull it down from the remote. And so now we are matching both. And if I quit, I see it here. Well, what I want to do is to make a copy of that config file somewhere safe. So let me, for now, just drag a copy out onto the desktop. And now I'm going to delete this project entirely from my computer. It's gone, but I still have that config file. But fortunately, I know that I've got a copy on GitHub that I can clone. So I'm going to return to GitHub. And as I showed you in the last video, we can copy that URL and use the GitHub CLI to clone it to a location of my choice. So back in Finder then, let me open a terminal once again. And then I'll CD to my desktop. Then I can paste in that copied URL and then press return. And we'll see that my project is being cloned there. So let me open it in Xcode. And I see that config.xe config file is in red. And that's an indication that it's missing and it can't find it. 
Well, fortunately, I have that copy on my desktop or stored somewhere safe, or maybe it's up on a server. So let me get it and drag it into my project folder. Well, it still looks red because Xcode hasn't been able to refresh yet, but the project builds fine. And if I right click and choose Show in Finder, it locates it and finds it. And when I'm back in Xcode, I see that it's now white, indicating that all is good. So let me switch to my iPhone 15 Pro simulator and test that out to see if this copy is working. And when I run the app, everything works as designed. Well, I hope you learned something useful in this video. If you're enjoying this series, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Be sure to subscribe to my channel to get notifications when new videos are released. Thanks for watching.